I love my son so much, I would never hurt him. I would never desire anything bad for him. My wife, Gloria, and I are accused of starving my son. When he was a baby, I was working 16 hours all the time. Gloria would tell me how she was having issues feeding him. She would tell me how he would take a bottle, but he would always spit up. She told the doctor how she was worried. She, he wasn't eating, he wasn't thriving. Gloria said that doctors ignored her. One day we saw her that he was really thin. He had black eyes. And we said it's enough, we gotta take him to a different doctor. But this hospital, after seeing my son, they treated us like criminals. They poured the, the blame on us. They said that it was our fault that he was dying. He said that he had heart failure and liver failure. They put my son in protective custody and didn't let us take him home. For two years, our son, he was in foster care. It really hurt us really bad. We got him back after two years, but Gloria and I have been fighting these criminal charges for four years. Gloria took a plea deal, even though she was innocent. I refused to plead guilty, and I'm still fighting this. I love my son, I love my, all my children, all the same. I would never hurt them. I would never wish anything bad for them. Gloria's a great mom. She would never hurt our kids. We're here to prove we would never try and kill my child. Uh, it's just very emotional, just... Uh, there's no reason why I would cause any harm to him. Gloria, tell me why you're here. I love my son. I would never ever try to hurt him. It never hurt any child. I just, I want the truth out. That's, that's all I want. How, how did this all happen with your son? Well, he, he was born and I tried to nurse him. Then I noticed he wasn't latching correctly. It just, it felt wrong. And then I brought this up with the nurses. They said that it's because he's premature that he would, he would figure it out. But he didn't, and when I noticed that he was choking and spitting up, and they just, the nurses kept saying the same things as the doctor. That's normal for premature babies. He'll outgrow it by two weeks old. He did not outgrow it. It just got worse and worse, and he had already lost 7% of his body weight by the time I was discharged, and that was only within 48 hours. He lost some percent of his body weight in 48 hours? Yeah. And they released him? Yeah. Nobody said, hey, this is probably not a good thing? He continuously said that he's fine. Your baby's fine. You guys are free to go. They said to you, hey, your baby's lost some percent of his body. Oh, right? no, they never told me. Well, how did you know that? The paperwork that they give you, the okay. after visit summaries. Right. I pointed it out to the nurse. She's like, oh, that's fine. It's because he's preemie. So you take him home, and then how soon are you so concerned that you start taking him to the doctor? Uh, it was less than a week when I had gained more concern. He just didn't look right. Yeah. He, I don't even know how to explain it. He just continuously looked like he was thinner. And when I had talked to his pediatrician at his one-week checkup, they said, well, his blood results came back from his newborn screening and they seem like they're a bit abnormal. So we're, we're gonna agree that you may be right. We'll send you up by ambulance to the children's hospital. Even though I told them he's lethargic, he's not eating right, he's not making enough diapers, they still just sent us home. They didn't do anything, and he was not just seen by one specialist, but two. Now, I'm told the doctors told your son was two hours from death. Yeah. And then liver and heart failure. Yeah. It's, it took that long for anybody to do anything. How many times did you take him to the doctors, to the hospital? With the hospital trips, anywhere between eight to ten. So, you, so it seems like you were responsive to what you were seeing with your son. What would happen when you pinched your son's skin? Whenever we pinched his skin, I, I showed that to the nurse. It's like, look at his skin, it's not normal. It was as if you could peel it off. Like, 
all you had to do was barely rub it and you could see the blood. Yeah. Um, now, will you keep taking him to the same doctor? I took him to a hospital in our area and I had to walk to the clinic because we were low income. Right. So he was the closest clinic and the one that I thought I could trust. The one that was across the way, it was a little further, but they had previously not been very good with my children. Well, but I'm saying, why didn't you go somewhere else? Because it didn't seem like he was being correctly diagnosed. I didn't have the funds. Okay. I was told he was also the best in the area, which uh, if he's the best, I'd hate to see the worst. Was this, uh, was this your first child? He, he's my fourth. He's your fourth child. So I, I knew that there was something wrong with my child. It's like I've dealt How with... How old is your son now? He's, he's almost five. Five in February. Oh, almost five. And how many children do you have? I have six. Six. And they all are home with me. You're 25 years old. You told me you're struggling low income financially, right? I, uh, I fail with birth control. But, I, but, okay. I'm just saying this. Why keep having kids and making things harder for yourself? That's it. I was told I was sterile before I even got pregnant. Yeah, so but I you know, after a few, a five, six kids, I mean, you know you're not. Aside from that, I also, with my first, uh, I didn't even know I was pregnant with her for f five okay, months. But here's the, you see what I'm getting at, right? Yes, You, You know, being 25 years old with six kids, that's got to be overwhelming at times, yeah, right? It's extremely overwhelming. It's and financially, it's hard, right? I do have... A little bit of help now. I, I um, with their medical complications, I do have a and But I'm caregiver. saying, even just buying groceries, diapers, uh, clothes, you know, having an apartment, like that's got to be a lot of money, right? We own our home right. now. At the time, we did not. Okay, I have a home. I have two children, and I think they're expensive as hell. <laughs> I mean, financially, that's got to be a big responsibility. I've always found ways around making sure that everybody. Are you had having what any more? No, no. Yeah. Uh, my last one actually nearly took my life, so I got fixed. I just say, you know, you, life is tough as it is. I mean, you don't want to oh, keep. It's extremely tough. Yeah. Okay. So, at some point, uh, the state took your son. Yes. As a mother, what, it, what was that like? It feels like you have literally had your heart ripped out. It's, it's not something I'd wish on my worst enemy. <laughs> You're constantly feeling empty. I don't even know how to really explain that. It doesn't feel like you're yourself anymore. And I've been told you have three other kids Losing one shouldn't be that bad, but it... Who told you that? Social worker. They said, well, you have three others. Don't worry about this one. Oh, they promised his adoption to a foster parent. That's how well, what little were you, they respected. What were you saying to this? I kept telling him, I will get my son. You guys are never going to get my kids. They... How long was he gone for? <sighs> Two years. Two years? They gave him back four days after his second birthday. <sighs> Where was he? Where was he all that time? Uh, he was bouncing around. He had someone take him from the hospital, and then he got placed with what they called a specialist, who deals with children who get as bad as he did. But that meant my son was placed with another stranger, and he had already fallen in love with her. He was calling her mom. <laughs> So, you know, you, you have this little baby boy, um, has a medical condition, I guess, that was undiagnosed, but he's losing all kind of weight. And, you know, somebody reports you, and they say, hey, you two are trying to kill your son, trying to starve him. Did you try to starve him? No, of course not. No. Um, do you feel like you took him to the hospital? You know, did you delay? Could you have taken him sooner? 
we took him soon. We took him, she took him, and we kept telling, or he was saying he was, he's fine, he's fine. And we trusted him. Yeah. Um, what kind of mother is Gloria? She's a great mom. She loves her kids, and they love her back. A big mama bear. Yeah. How's your son now? He's good, he's healthy, he's growing strong. What was that like for you not to have your son for a couple of years? It was horrible. You go crazy, you lose it. Uh, all right. You, you, what made you to say, I'm not taking a deal? Because they wanted to charge you, right? Yeah. And they said, hey, plead guilty, we're going to give you this. Yeah. And you said, I said I'm, not taking, I'm, not, I'm not guilty. I'm not. I'm and not. so they eventually dropped the charges against you. They moved it, and he's, they're saying they're going to move it to a year, and they're going to cancel it. Right. Did you ever tell your wife, don't plead to that? I, I told her, I told her they switched um, attorneys yeah. and the other attorney convinced her. Yeah, but did you, did, you, were, were, did you say, honey, you didn't do anything, don't plead to that? I told her, I told her. Yeah, but, but she was scared. She was scared, she, he, he frightened her. No. Right. It was. And this is important for both of you to take this test and prove that you didn't do this. Yes. Okay, yeah. sir. Friend. We asked you, did you ever deliberately starve your son when he was an infant? You answered no. Did you ever intentionally starve your son when he was an infant to try and cause his death? You answered no. The results came back the same to each question, and it came back that Seraphin told the truth. <laughs> All right, Gloria, we asked you, did you ever deliberately starve your son when he was an infant? You answered no. Did you ever intentionally starve your son when he was an infant to try and cause his death? You answered no. The results came back the same to each of those two questions, and it came back that Gloria told the truth. It was two hours from death before anyone listened to us. It should never take that. We could have really lost him. CPS was the least of my worries. It was more the fact that he almost died. I just wanted to prove that we did not do this on purpose. It's a condition, unfortunately, one that my husband suffers too. It's not fair that they treated us that way. It's not fair that they tore our son away. But the doctors should have listened when I had asked for help. And the abuse specialist who was in the room pointing a finger at us, we did ask for an x-ray. She denied us that. That would have saved his life a long time ago. To deny it is like denying a piece of the child. It's unfortunately who he is. He has to deal with it. His drinks are thickened every day now because it got so bad that it was now, it's only fixable through surgery now. He could have outgrown it if they had it diagnosed sooner. Well, uh, we wish you all the best. And like I said, um, uh, we certainly hope that your, your son keeps progressing and, and gets better along the way. And I really hope that someday you can, you know, get that knocked off your record because to me that is, that's a travesty. Not that it probably will affect you in any way, but still, I mean, to do nothing wrong and have that, you know, on your record to me just seems unjust. But I'm glad you came here, and I'm glad you cleared your name. <laughs> Click here to watch more Wilco's. Click here to subscribe and get a front row seat for all the action. Can you relate to this story? Go to www.stewilcos.com to get my help.